Hello music makers, Mike here, and today we are taking a look at this plugin called Dual Delay X by UVI. Let's dive right into it. Okay, so here we have it. This is Dual Delay X, and in this video I will demonstrate using one of my favorite analog style synthesizers called Diva. Yeah, that cool echo delay, uh, as well as uh, one of my favorite piano plugins called Addictive Keys. Which you heard in the beginning of this video. Now, um, why would you need another delay or echo effect? I mean, I have uh, plenty of uh, delay effects myself here, but um, I think the main thing I love about this is that you get basically everything you need to sculpt and sound design your delay, your echoes, as you wish, in one single interface. Of course, you can add a standard normal echo and then add those um, panning differences, uh, saturation, diffusion and so on, digital grit here in the signal chain, but having it all in one interface makes a lot of difference for your efficiency. So, uh, let's start with the piano. Now, if I play just a dry sound, it sounds like this, and if I now turn it on, so I had the feedback here high, so it will take a long time until the echo disappears. Uh, now, what do we have here in this interface? Of course, the, the, the main thing for any echo effect or delay is the mix knob. A bit strange to have it, the most important knob, uh, tiny up here, but okay, so once you learn it, it's up here. So that, of course, is how much you feed into. It's basically the send, if you use it as the send effect and have this on 100%. Then the next important aspect is the feedback, meaning how long it takes uh, for the echoes to fade away. And a, a cool feature here is that you actually see the echoes, and since I have the reflection on here with uh, 45 degrees, you will see it's basically a ping-pong delay going left, right, and so on, if you listen. Okay. Um, so the feedback, if I turn it down, you can see it dies out quickly. Okay? You also have uh, the phase over time here, so it changes the phase... phasing here for the waveform. Uh, so basically, the mix and feedback, that's something every delay has, of course. Another very important thing is to have it syncable to your tempo, which is this button here, the metronome icon, classic. So you could put it on milliseconds and make it short slapback, for example, if you want to. But you can put it, I like to have my delays on um, sync, synced to the tempo of my project. And I mean, eighths. Sounds pretty good, depending on your tempo, of course. I often like to put it on triplets for some reason, so the delays uh, don't sync up to the downbeats as much. Now, then you have modulation. This is a cool feature I like because you don't generally, in at least in my case, you don't want the delays or the echoes to be too clean and too similar. So with modulation, um, you can see, and by the way, if you hover your mouse over here, you can see a little tiny text down here. Controls the amount of modulation that is applied to the delay time. Uh, some quick info about each knob here. So basically, this detunes in sense. Uh, if I overdo it, for example, you will hear the echoes. You hear, they start to sound very detuned. But if you just put a tiny amount, it as some analog character, it can change the rate and offset as well. A few sounds there. Reflection, you can put it in rotation, so now it's only... It starts on the right here, and... 
you can put it in an angle so you can you can see this is really cool so here it favors the right side and to the left but slight tiny amount on the right and this is a this way you can create somewhere in between the ping pong and, and classic mono delay or you can put it um, all the way on the right or if you uh, change this rotation here you can see all the way to the left or somewhere in between so it f goes a bit to the left I generally uh, prefer to have my delays either to the right, leaning to the right, left, or ping pong left and right, because I don't. Uh, so I don't. I never do this in mono. You can do it in mono if you put the out here to. Um, I think this is mono if you put it on. Yeah, out stereo width, of course, um, like that. And uh, but but I prefer to have it on the left, so um, like this, or to the right. By the way, uh, I just noticed that you have to click and go down to turn it left and up to turn it right. You cannot do left and right like this. This is just why I, um, a bit strange behavior for the um, controller of the knobs, to be honest. But anyway, once you learn it once uh, you can uh, start to implement that aspect anyway so continuing here we have the feedback shaping um, this is an interesting feature because if you have a delay and if you don't compensate for um, how much you know it basically turns into a resonant uh, filter if you turn up the resonance on a filter, you know, it starts to self-oscillate and it's peaking on a specific frequency. With the feedback shaping, as far as I understood it from the manual and their videos, you basically turn this up, you compensate for that feedback so it doesn't start to become piercing on that frequency that, that builds up. So I usually just turn it on and leave it on 100%. Then you can, of course, shape, uh, and you can do this in, with an EQ, afterwards if you want on the send effect but as i said in the beginning it's cool to have this in the interface so you, a low cut i generally all i generally i pretty much always low cut my delays because i do not do not want them to interfere with the low end so so if i play if i play bass here uh and do I, i'm struggling a bit i have to go down so like that okay so if i now you hear it basically, I, I I put it, I overdid it just for demonstration. But usually, I, I um, low cut somewhere around 200, 300 hertz or so, and then often a high cut to not interfere with the clarity frequencies, as I call them. So I might have something like this. Okay. Uh, then we have these two units. Diffusion is basically. Well, defusing the bounces, the echoes, so that it turns pretty much more into reverb domain. Not really a reverb, but you will hear what I mean. If I play, and then diffusion. You hear, it blurs the echoes more. Like a, a, a room would with all the echoes coming from everywhere and you can turn it up really cool feature and then dispersion i i checked the manual i didn't really understand it dispersing the audio uh, pretty much similar to well 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 uh, so when i try this i i feel i get like this little pium, pium, pium. So I actually, I, I don't know when I would use this particular feature, to be honest. Um, I would probably want uh, another, I don't know what else to modulate, but uh, personally, I'm not a fan of this. But diffusion could be a cool thing to have a slide. And then one of my favorite things to put on um, 
Delays is some saturation, so they have a tape saturation. It would have been nice to have uh, various modules of saturation, so tape saturation, uh, console saturation, analog console, um, you know, some other types of distortion here. But you can change the warmth of that saturation and how much you drive it. So let's put it on max on drive so we can hear. Totally distorted, okay? But just having a slight bit of that and adding some warmth here. Let's put it on all the way to the mix. This is only the delay now. Hard to play. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, and finally, this digital grit, which basically makes it, you know, you can you can turn out the bit, turn down the bit depth to like 8 bit, let's say, sample rate, let's do it to old school now, something like this. Okay, and let's now mix that in and see what happens. Let's turn on the tape saturation again and let's move this up to like 10 bit and let's say 20 uh, in sample rate. Hmm, interesting, some kind of metallic resonance from this digital grit. I guess if you if you are into like very old school. Uh, vibe digital grid can be cool as well these two I am not sure about I will use that much myself but all the other modules here are so good to have uh, in one interface of a delay and this one as well so I can actually see I, I haven't seen any other delay that really shows exactly what happens um, you know when when you ch uh, forward the delays from left to right and, and the facing Okay, now uh, let's move on and uh, so we're going to go on through the interface and start to play some sounds on this bass here, or bass synth, because uh, I have to be honest, bass synths or low synth pulses is one of my favorite things to put delay on. I do it on piano too, of course, but I mean, without the delay, let's play something. Okay, so let's, let's put it lower. Some resonance. even lower. Okay, so now we have some bass. And it's pretty boring pulse, right? Now, you could of course put a reverb on this. Uh, let's say plate reverb here. But reverbs uh, start to sound pretty uh, mushy and cloudy, you know, washy, especially in the low range. So I tend to favor delay effects for this. Uh, let's see, let's start with this um, preset we dialed in and try how it sounds on this simple part. Okay, now. Too much feedback. Okay, let's try it without. It does so much to the to the width and depth without turning too washy and cloudy and you know like a reverb especially. Um, so I will try to just now check some of the presets because. I usually prefer just starting with like let's say a default preset or no that's a, mm, some classic preset you know uh, probably ping I like ping pongs and then dial in something I would probably I would probably mm, save a default preset myself but as you can see 
they have all these um, folders, and this is classic UVI, all their plugins. And uh, so uh, I think more developers should have folders and categories. I think sound toys have have this as well. But you know, um, have these uh, different use cases separated by, by folders and uh, then you have something to start from. So let's say a dub vibe. I don't know what this sound looks like, but let's do that one. So you can see it's eight note dotted with lots of feedback. Okay. And this way you can also learn. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's a bit too much. Uh, feedback for the bass, lush. I mean, let's see, spark. Okay, so here's here's a lot of things going on. Feedback is going crazy. Let's see. So the feedback, yeah, the feedback makes it so you know the uh, echoes bounces start to get crowded here. But let's see how it sounds. <laughs> I hear some of that digital grid. Here it was actually kind of cool. You hear that noisy, old school, like tape, 10 bit, 12 kilohertz sample rate. Uh, I take it back. I will probably start to experiment with some of these presets because, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of variation and you even see it here visually. Okay, too much mono centered here, so I would probably put that on like uh, here, 100%, and more here. Whoops! <laughs> uh, let's try some uh, creative and see. Okay, so you can see some kind of doubling here. Lots of echoes going on. Uh, let's go back to one of the classics. I would usually start with simple and wide or something. Something like this. This is a really good one to start with. I really recommend you to explore the actual, uh, you know, the modules here. Let's see. Uh, I forgot, I want to show you a very important feature. One of the most important that for some reason many <laughs> echo and delay effects lack, which is if I play something, then the delay starts to bounce, right? And if my next note here, if I play one and then another note, um, comes at the uh, same time as one of the echoes, the bounces, it will start to get crowded. Right? So, uh, I like delays and there's not many around that have a ducking feature, meaning basically sidechain compression, but within the delay itself. So, it listens to, as soon as I actually start to play a note, any sound or whatever, then it will compress down the delay side, so this, this wet side, compared to the dry side. It's a bit hidden because I think they added this in the update. Ducking, <laughs> a bit of fun here, they made this duck. Uh, so if I click there, it opens up this ducker on, and you, then you can see if I start to play, if I just play once, and then I start to play, you will see some reduction here depending on, of course, the feature, um, the settings here. So if I start to play, if I continue play now with a pretty much pretty high threshold, if I continue playing with these settings, you don't hear the echoes until I release. And they did, it pumps up, you hear the pumping effect of sidechain compression. But if you have this just, you don't need much, actually. Just need it to, I love that they show the reduction. So 
so that the, uh, you get the clarity from all the attack parts of the notes when I play them, but still get the echoes as soon as I release. So now the, the duck here is activated, you can see it from the dot here, you can even see the gain reduction from that little dot, I believe, so... So you can play a bass line like... And as soon as uh, you release the keys, it will open up the delay completely uh yeah so uh well so some constructive feedback i gave by the way uh, is uh, well this is pretty hidden here uh but basically one of my biggest pet peeves is non-scalable interfaces so i try to look and identify uh, by, by yeah you can see the signal chain here i didn't find a way you cannot drag this out uh, usually UVI has some kind of, you know, scaler, like you can put it on 150%, just like UVI, uh, this synth here, you get, have to go in here and put it on a specific percent. That's okay, as long as I can expand it. So that's pretty much my only real big pet peeve with this plugin. It might be there, I haven't found it. Um, and I didn't so it notice it in the manual either. Anyway, uh, that is Dual Delay X. I will leave a link in the description so you can check this out for yourself if you need another delay effect. Um, the biggest gain from this, as I said, is having everything you need to sculpt the delay and the echoes in one single interface without having to go to, you know, sub modules that are hidden, menus and so on. So I will see you in the next video, my friends.